What's going on, everybody? It's Professor Zeus, and I'm back with another video. And I'd like to have a kind of a continuous conversation from my last video, um, speaking about AI, but kind of shifting gears a little. I want to speak specifically about Saudi Arabia. Um, Saudi Arabia, um, I've always heard that they were building like a futuristic city. You know, the crown, crown prince. Um, I know he's had this whole new vision of Saudi Arabia and how he wants it to be kind of like the epicenter of what the future is going to look like. But I never really done my own personal research on, you know, this futuristic city or this this vision or idea that, you know, the crown prince has. Um, and I never gave it too much thought. Um, but some news has actually just dropped and I think it's worthwhile having a discussion. Um, so essentially, Neom, which is the, you know, Saudi Arabian futuristic mega project is just received like a massive $5 billion deal to build an AI data center. And I just want us to briefly look at kind of like the whole idea that Saudi Arabia is thinking about, and then we'll deep dive into a little bit more about it. For too long, humanity has existed within dysfunctional and polluted cities that ignore nature. Now, a revolution in civilization is taking place. Imagine a traditional city and consolidating its footprint, designing to protect and enhance nature. The line will be home to 9 million residents and will be built with a footprint of just 34 square kilometers and we are designing it to provide a healthier, more sustainable quality of life. The Lines communities are organized in three dimensions. Residents have access to all their daily needs within five minute walk neighborhoods. And the Lines infrastructure makes it possible to travel end to end in 20 minutes with no need for cars, resulting in zero carbon emissions. By leveraging AI technology, services are autonomous, saving you time and effort. Designed by world-leading architects, the line is 500 meters tall, 200 meters wide, 170 kilometers long, and housed within an elegant mirror glass facade. Intelligent solutions create efficiency and year-round temperate microclimate with natural ventilation energy and water supplies are 100% renewable. The line is designed as a series of unique communities, offering a wealth of amenities, providing equitable views and immediate access to the surrounding nature, with 40% of the world accessible within six hours at the heart of the globe's key trade routes, a place for commerce and communities to thrive like nothing on earth seen before. The Line, the city that delivers new wonders for the world. Yeah, so I don't know about you guys, but that, if anything I've ever seen, looks like the future. Um, and just to put into a little bit more context, that's like a 1.5 gigawatt facility that they just got awarded to, to build. So it's not really just a, another tech project or something that the crown prince is thinking about. This is like a, this is a huge chess move in the Middle East. Now, let me pull up the article. So, Neom. Saudi Arabia's dystopian desert city project announces a $5 billion AI data center. They say data is the new oil. <clears throat> On today, the deal between Neom, a private company owned by the nation's public investment fund, and a sustainable data center developer named Data Vault was announced via press release. Neom called the $5 billion deal a landmark agreement, marking a significant step toward realizing the kingdom's vision for a sustainable data-driven economy. The new data center will allegedly be built in Neom's Oxagon region, 
a floating industrial port city that is being constructed along the Red Sea coast. This agreement with Neom and Oxagon underscores our unwavering commitment to support the kingdom's vision of becoming a regional, digital, and AI hub, said Rajit Nanda, CEO of DataVault. The kingdom's strategic location, coupled with its abundant green energy resources, aligns perfectly with DataVault's mission in providing state-of-the-art, sustainable data centers. Wow. So essentially, this is like this data center is going to be the brain of a entirely new city. This is a five hundred billion dollar bet, essentially on the future. Um, and you know, from what I, the other things that I've been seeing, they they want to have flying taxis. Um, and you saw the wall like structure, housing nine million people. I mean, aside from that, it's essentially all about data and AI. And me personally, I think this is like a, you know, a race between, you know, Saudi Arabia and the rest of the uh, United Arab Emirates um, just to see who can be the fastest, who can be the fastest AI superpower in the region, you know, um, literally. We just, I just, in my last video, I spoke about the AI Action Summit in France, and we saw some of the um, the UAE leaders in that video, and and the UAE announced that they're partnering with France to build Europe's largest AI data center. Data center. So it's like, and it just makes you think, right? Just like the article said, data is the new oil. And whoever controls the most powerful AI infrastructure is going to have the, the, um, the grip over, you know, the global economy. Now, you saw in the last video, Vice President J.D. Vance was saying how America doesn't have to have to be at the forefront, but they're, we're, we are willing to work with different nations in order to see this vision through. But when you got some somebody like Data Vault coming, dropping five billion on, on a vision, it just makes you think, right? Maybe, maybe Neom, the line, maybe we're actually closer to that being a reality than we actually think, right? And when you build these AI data centers, you got to think about what happens when you build these things, right? You attract different companies, you attract world-class researchers, innovators. So in reality, like Saudi Arabia isn't just building like a data center. It's like a whole AI ecosystem. And I think it's proposed to be the data center is proposed to be done in 2028. So that's in like three years. And it just makes you think, right? After what, you know, Vice President JD Vance was talking about, we might have like some innovation in our in, in the private sector, but I think what Saudi Arabia got on us is that they have more of a coordinated national strategy for how they want to go about AI and not just AI, but the infrastructure around AI. We don't have, from my own research, my own knowledge, we don't have any company like Neom. We don't have any proposed idea of like the line as a, as a living, um, living place for people. Um, we don't have any multi-billion dollar data center projects that I that I know of, but we do have kind of like a fragmented approach where we have different people in the space um, who are kind of like building their own facilities. And, you know, because, you know, we love a good competition, you know, we see a lot of these guys, um, instead of working together, they're just more so 
you know, going at it to see who's best, which has its pros and cons. But I think that's why you see um, Elon Musk. He just put in like a $98 billion bid on OpenAI and Sam Altman. But Sam Altman's like, nah, I need to keep that. But ever since Elon purchased um, X or Twitter, he's also been working on his own AI called Grok, which is like an extension. I don't know if you pull up Twitter or X. There's that little thing on the bottom of the um, the user interface where that would be like the AI button. So we have innovators here who are trying to work on AI, but it's not like a spearheaded or collaborative effort, if you ask me. Saudi Arabia looks like they know what they're, they're doing and they're coming together to, to be on top in the future. I mean, you know, our vice president could say it as much as he wants, but we got to see, we got to see the real action. You know what I mean? So I don't really think, you know, the future of AI is just about, you know, who has like the best algorithms, even though those are important. But if you have the infrastructure to run AI efficiently, properly, I think you're going to be on top. And I think Saudi Arabia and the UAE, they, they really understand this and, they're not just, you know, building data centers, you know, they're, they're building the foundation for the next century of technological in innovation. And like I said in my last video, now is the time to start focusing on the future. Start focusing on these different bits of information that you can find. Leverage it because information is key leverage it and see what you can learn and how you can put yourself in a position to be ahead of the curve because the future is here you know and it's really not a question of whether or not um us over here in the states united states if we can compete i mean obviously we can i think the real question is are we going to wake up and realize that we need a national strategy like all of our our, our geniuses, all of our AI top heads coming together and be like, yeah, this is the United States strategy because from what I, from what it looks like, a lot of these other countries are coming together and saying, yeah, we're gonna we need to collab and you know get out get, get ourselves out here. But let me know what you guys think. Um, should the United States be worried about you know these developments? Should it be encouraged? Should we be should we question it? Should we try to collab and see how we can assist? Um, yeah, it's, it's a definitely an interesting time for these types of things. And a lot of my videos are AI related and going to be a lot of tech stuff related because, like I said, technology is not going anywhere. AI is not going anywhere. But don't feel like it's going to take your job. Look at it like it's going to make you more useful because you'll be more proactive or productive doing your job. As always, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. We have finally surpassed 200 subscribers. So right now we're on the road to 300 subscribers. So if you haven't already, subscribe. Send this to somebody who might like it. And yeah, it's Professor Zeus. And always remember, it's you and that verse for a reason. I teach you, you teach me. We both take what we taught each other and apply it to what's going on. That's the only way life can continue to go on. Until next time, peace.